I'm Stephen Garnett. I'm Professor of Conservation and Sustainability at Charles Darwin University. We also use Edgar to, to look at where the, the distribution is at the moment and where it might be. And it's got this very nice facility where you can run a slide along the bottom and that gives you some idea of what might happen to, be, to these birds under a, a changed climate. We don't know whether the, bond, the birds will respond in the way that the climate is likely to, but at least we've got a, an idea of which birds to look for, which birds to monitor, uh, to be careful about. And this, you need it this far in advance. We're looking at uh, 2085 with the, with the modelling, you can go up to that. Now how quickly is the climate going to change? When do we have to act? Those are the sorts of questions we can, uh, the dead can, can help answer. Birds, of course, are, are relying on particular elements of their habitat. In, and one of the big mysteries is, uh, or lack of knowledge, is where that habitat is going to move, where the different elements of that habitat are going to move. There's, uh, there's this idea of ecological communities that we have in our head, we have in our legislation. But under climate change, those different elements of those communities are going to move in different directions. Uh, and we, we don't understand that process in, at all. We, we can see it in the past, we can see it in the fossil record, how the species have come together and gone apart again. What's going to happen in the future? Well, the sorts of modelling that Edgar does can follow multiple species and look at the way their climate space is going to move to different parts of the country. What sort of new communities we're likely to have? Will they provide the sort of structure or food plants, nesting sites that the birds need? So I, th I think it'll be a very valuable tool in, in that respect. Well, Glossy is a very interesting bird from, from this point of view. There's, there's three different forms of it. There's one just on Kangaroo Island, very rare bird. There's one up in north or central Queensland, and then there's one in southeast Australia. And they each behave differently. The poor old kangaroo bird, the island bird, seems to lose its climate space altogether. There's nothing like it down there. But just next door, in the hills where around Adelaide, where the bird used to live uh, in the 19th century, is a climate space for the one in central Queensland. So what you could do, perhaps, is bring some birds that have adapted to the climate in central Queensland and introduce those genetics to the, to the kangaroo island population. Now, that's a, it's, a, it's a political question, it's a policy question, philosophical question in many ways, but it gives, this sort of modelling gives you an idea of the sorts of questions we will need to be asking in the future as climate changes. If we want to keep the, the biodiversity we've got, we've got some very tough philosophical, moral questions to answer. Uh, we've, we've, in a sense, we've, we've taken a moral decision to keep using um, fossil fuels and changing our climate, but there are the, all these consequences we haven't thought through at all. And, and m mixing up uh, birds like this, perhaps taking them into the captivity forever if their climate space disappears, then we've got to make a decision of whether we want to do that, whether we want to resource that. And, and Edgar is helping us look at those questions.